The rare book season is upon us and we're stalking down south with Napier's Steve Rowe. We're on the marvellous bit of uh, countryside in Berkshire and uh, we've got a lot of different animals here. We've got fallow, roe and muntjac. I stalk this uh, on, on a regular basis, you know, a couple of times a week uh, with, a, with a syndicate of four people and uh, we look after land in that respect. It's mixed uh, woodland, um, some rolling hillsides and some uh, fairly large uh, fields. So we've got margins to work on and um, some fairly dense wood as well. And we obviously have a coal plan between us, of course. So we look at uh, managing particularly muntjac, which are very prolific in this area. Um, but um, we've got a healthy population of, uh, of roe deer to look after as well. well go back up where that monkey dow was. He's obviously still in it. Yeah. Try and bump her and then get to the bottom and walk into the field, see if yeah. you can see something for you. We'll walk you around. Okay. Right. My name's Les Metcalf. I'm uh, 47, come from West Yorkshire. Uh, I've shot since I was 14, stalked for the last 20 down here in Berkshire, originally when I was in the army. Uh, it's a long way to come, but it's worth it. The rifle this morning is uh, a Blazer 93 uh, and a Swarovski 412 by 50 on top. You can stalk here in the morning and be shooting a, an 18 pound muntjac or a 100 pound fallow deer um, that ranges up to 200 yards. Today, the quarry is a cool roebuck and the stalkers are fully equipped. Steve has brought a treasure trove of stalking accessories from the Napier stockroom. More on those later. It's a spy and stalk mission on the undulating home county's terrain. Normally, the spring bucks will be coming out of velvet and making regular appearances by now. But with the cold weather staying unseasonably late this year, the boys will have to be very selective. Les and Steve happen on a cool buck out in the open, but it's on its way as soon as they spy it. They discuss a possible alternative approach, but there's just too much ground to cover and too many variables. This one, they'll have to let pass by. Too far away, too quick. Yeah. With no joy in the first location, the team retreats to the vehicle and hopes for better luck in a neighbouring area. We want it to go far and just plot up that it's going to come to us, I think. Just as they hoped, the change of location gives promising results right from the off. An initial spy reveals a suitable cull book browsing at the other side of the field. The only problem now is how to stalk into the beast. It might be worth it. What do you think? Oh, I don't think you're going to get it from here, Les. Is no, it? no, no, not from not even attempt to cross it. Slide back down the wood. Well, it doesn't don't take us a second to turn around. Yeah. Slide down the wood, will it? Let's see if and we can. can get out and walk through. Yeah, I'm done. Give it a go. A careful stalk through the adjacent woodland is the obvious solution. This terrain is flat and relatively forgiving, but they're guaranteed to lose sight of the buck and there's no telling where it will be when they emerge. Time for the pair to put their well-honed field craft to good use. Stalking in closer, Steve and Les are getting everything right so far. The buck has stayed put but stopping to glass at a suitable point reveals there's one more surprise in store. Just on one side, there's a doe. There's a doe in the wood with him. Yeah. I think should get it then. The clock is ticking. The buck is heading steadily towards the doe in the wood, and if it crosses into the trees, the opportunity for a shot will be gone. The pair carefully stalk in closer. With the buck just a few yards from the woodland edge, Steve tells Les that now is the time to take the shot. The buck takes the bullet in the vitals and runs forward on adrenaline to drop in the undergrowth, just inside the forest boundary. Rifle at the ready, the pair close in to find the buck has expired as planned. It's the last week of April, but this book is still in velvet. It's a shame to have to cull a book before its antlers are clean, but after careful consideration, this beast was deemed a suitable candidate to cull. Row can be a serious threat to young trees in this area, and their numbers have to be carefully managed. Having confirmed death, Les is ready to drag the carcass into the open and perform the Gralloch, and that's where the latest bit of Napier kit comes in. Steve brings in the vehicle, and with it, the new Anapia Autoclick, designed to turn most vehicles into a suspended Gralic station. Click. Right. 
We've got a full feature on the auto click coming later in the show, so we won't spoil the surprise now. But aided by gravity and deftly following the proper process, Les has an effective and hygienic Grelic completed in no time at all. The boys can head for home with the shooting show's first book of 2013 in the bag. You can bet there'll be plenty more to come. I'm Steve from Napier and we've just invented a new product called the Auto Click and simply it's a device to enable you to growl like a deer very simply from the tailgate suspended which means it's never going to touch the ground. <laughs> Originally it was born from pain as a lot of these things are. I happen to be growling a, uh, a, a roebuck on S hooks in a tree, branch broke part way through, animal came down, nearly took my finger off with it and I thought at the time it would be so much easier if I had some other way of doing it. The purpose of today's demonstration is to show you how simple it is to put it in and out of virtually any vehicle where the tailgate lifts upwards, which in this case is a Land Rover, but it works well in most other vehicles. That could be Subarus, Hyundais, Volkswagens, Dodge, Chrysler, it doesn't matter whatever it is. As long as the lid goes up, it will almost certainly fit. The Auto Click is a quite remarkable device in the fact that it uses the car's own lock as the main anchor point. And as you can see, it's all contained in its own bag so it can be stowed. And the whole kit weighs just 700 grams. Not that it's an issue because you're not going to be walking with it, it stays in the vehicle. Simply, what it's doing is preventing the car door from closing. So when you first get one of these, you put it into your vehicle and decide the length that you require for your own vehicle. You see there's several different locating holes. You pick the nearest one to suit the vehicle. So the base unit fits simply over the vehicle's locking bar. The top part is brought up and push it up so it clicks in place, and then find the nearest appropriate hole without exerting pressure upwards, which means that when the, vehicle, the animal goes on it, it automatically locates and this pivot plate adjusts downwards and takes its correct angle. You can put uh, 165 kilos on there without any problem at all. I've had Seeker, Fallow, lots of Munt Jack and Roe Deer. Uh, we've had a Chinese Water Deer on it on one occasion at Les Shop, but that's really not much different to a Roe Deer in size. The only animal that I think probably would be impractical for this sort of device would be a Red Deer. And in reality, you're very unlikely to drive a vehicle like this to anywhere where you've dropped a Red Deer. <laughs> <laughs> but for the type of stalking most people in the UK do, and certainly across Europe, especially wild boar, etc., it's a perfect angle, a perfect shape, because obviously the animal's hanging away from the vehicle. You've also got a perfect position to lay all your knives and your butt outs and your kit and your torch and your water bottle and everything else without dropping it on the floor. And if dropped properly, the animal hits the deck when you shot it, and it shouldn't really touch the ground again until it goes into the game dealer because once it's suspended, it can go from the auto click straight into the blood box. There's no um, situations where the carcass can be contaminated with uh, soil. And what you get in your auto click is a bag that contains everything that you need to do the job. We get an aqua sack, which is a two litre bag that you fill with water. It's got a shower head on it, so once that's screwed up and hung in position on the back of the car, it's very easy to wash your hands after the event. These are available separately as well, but one comes with each kit. It comes with a compact gambrel. This is important because it keeps the, the animal nice and high in the vehicle, um, obviously because we want to use the maximum space we can get, and the auto click itself. As you can see, it takes literally three seconds to put it in, and to get it out is just as quick as well. Uh, obviously remove the gambrel, make sure you remove the deer, make sure everything's out of the way and then normally of course you put your fingers over and press the release button but if your vehicle's release latch is too high it's very simple you just take out the pin, close the trunk down until you've got it to the state where you can reach it and it's as simple as that. 
it just comes straight out and you put it away. To summarize, what you get for your money is your Apex Auto Click. It comes in a bag with a gambrel, with the Aquasac, with a 12 month warranty, and it is made in England. And in the UK, this is a recommended retail price of $69.99. So not a lot of money for a piece of kit that can stay in the car and be ready to do a good job for you for years and years.